Overtime Hockey Talk. My name is Mark Paul, Justin Baker, co-host, joining me in studio. And we have a few series to uh, to talk about that have ended. It is the official end of the Carolina Hurricanes, the Chicago Blackhawks, the Arizona Coyotes, and the Columbus Blue Jackets 2019-2020 season. And uh, as those close out, we're going to just talk a little bit about the series. But really, our main focus is on what those four teams uh, are going to look like moving forward, uh, whether we think they'll take steps forward or backwards or uh, what have you. So, Justin, we'll just jump right in. Uh, the Let's start with the absolute trumping and thumping by the Colorado Avalanche of the Arizona Coyotes. After a few games where it looked like Kemper was going to give Arizona at least, I don't think we thought they were going to win, but like at least extend this series to, you know, maybe six, maybe even seven games. And that just did not happen. I felt bad for Kemp's. Oh my gosh. I felt bad for the junior team that Colorado was playing. <laughs> it was bad. It was rough. Oh yeah. No, no Kessel, no hole to be found. I mean, they, they got their points and, but it wasn't like, what it should have been, not even a point per game, which is what I was kind of expecting for these guys, but or something close to it. I mean, I mean, when you're at a in a seven one game, which is what game five was, and you score the what well, it was, they made it from six nothing to six one. So like that goal is inconsequential, right? And that goal doesn't matter. And any any goals when you're that far down, they don't really make any difference. The same same kind of goes for. Uh, for the other seven one loss that they experienced, uh, by that point they were already down four nothing. So it, it doesn't. Oh nope, sorry, three, five. Yeah, yeah, four nothing, four nothing. So at those points, those those points, those goals, they don't mean too much. Uh, it's fair to say that Colorado and Arizona, there was the biggest disparity out of any series, even though they it wasn't a sweep. And we did see one sweep. I actually think the disparity between those two teams was much greater than it was between the Chicago Blackhawks and the Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah, I you know it's funny. I saw a, like a little meme, and it was just oh the Arizona bandwagon, right? And it was the picture of that Oklahoma Sooners like wagon where it goes on the field, <sighs> okay, makes a sharp yeah, yeah. turn, tips over, and that's that sums it up because everybody and myself, I was a little excited for the Arizona going into this, but the minute I saw them facing Colorado, I'm like, nope, no chance. But yeah. I figured, yeah, Kemp's, you know, maybe Hall, Kessel will show up, score a few goals, and they'll make it competitive. And yeah, maybe because, six because Hall did make a, a series between the Devils and the Lightning. Right. He he extended that to six games. I mean, there was it was somewhat exciting, but it was just they had no shot. No, and it, it looked like those last two games where they got thumped 7-1 both times, like they just stopped playing for Rick Tockett, and I feel bad, and... And it, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see some. I don't want to say major turnover in some players, but there's going to be there's going to be some changes. And when you don't have even a GM really solidified, I mean, I know Steve Sullivan's there, but you know, is long term, yeah, he's not really term, the guy yeah. right now. So we'll. Uh, is he still on an interim basis? But yeah, I mean, I, I think that they have that he is. He's. I'm, yeah, I'm not. Sure I mean, regardless, I, there, there's bound to be some changes because it, it was clear how much further ahead Colorado was than Arizona. I mean Taylor Hall just killed his his ability to go in and get ten million or right. something. Like there's no way anyone's giving him that kind of money. No, I didn't think uh, so either, but I didn't not, even think that going in before this series, but you know I still. thought someone would give him nine. But yeah, I mean on, if Jeff Skinner can get nine then. on the flip side, <laughs> Nazem Kadri might need nine. I mean oh whew. eleven points in eight games, six goals. He was on fire. And before that he had ten points in uh, in nineteen playoff games. Ten points in nineteen playoff games, and only three goals in nineteen playoff games. Then he goes and gets six and eight games. Uh, definitely a uh, this is this is his year. I think Kadri has uh, like finally gone to the second round of the playoffs, <laughs> and I'm sure he's thrilled. Uh, not zero to mention penalty minutes too. Of course, I Nathan McKinnon played great as well. What's that? I said zero penalty minutes too for Kadri. Yeah, what the heck. <laughs> Um, and previous to that, in 19 playoff games, he had 56. Granted, that's because you know some of those were 10 minuteers, but uh, still, nonetheless, but, yeah. And McKinnon, like you said, my gosh, this guy is so good. Like if he didn't score the goal, he was a direct. Res- it was his. 
he, it was his doing. Right, he was it's driving right, it yeah. all. Yeah, he had 13 points in eight games. It's just un- unbelievable. Uh, we'll see second round. You know, we, we don't know who they're going to play, uh, but we'll see second round if if it's a little a little more even. I I, th- I don't think it's uh, they won't play Vegas. Nope, for sure. Uh, right now, they would like if Vancouver were to continue and win out the series. I think Vancouver would play Vegas, and then Colorado uh, will take on the winner of uh, the Stars and the Flames. I believe that's I correct. That's how it goes. So between the between the Stars and the Flames, who do you want to see as Colorado? I I got to think that you're hoping the Flames can at least push it to seven games. Uh, which we'll we'll find out tonight. So maybe by the time you're listening to this, you already know the answer to that. But uh, as far as what the Arizona Coyotes do in the off season, it, do you think that they bring back Taylor Hall? Do you think that he's going to sign there? I don't think he'll re-sign there. Um, not that I don't think there's an opportunity for him. And you know, maybe I mean Arizona is a desirable place to live, but maybe a long term goal. That's about it. Yeah, that's not exactly a desirable hockey place. Right. But. And I think if you're Taylor Hall, right, obviously you've made your money, right? He's been banking six million since he entered this league, basically. So he's made enough money. I don't think that's really on the on the forefront of his mind. He it's wants all about to win. winning. Yeah. yeah. Which you're not gonna win in Arizona. No, you're just not. I'm sorry. Like there are some teams you are never going to win in. No. It just is what it is. And I think too You're never going to win if you go to the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> That's yeah, just sorry. what it is. You won't win. Yeah. <laughs> and I I personally think, too, not only does he want to go to a place where win, but he wants to go to a place where he can have like a top-line center to play with, somewhere where he's not sure. – he doesn't have to be the guy. He's got somebody there to help support him. Yeah, yeah. And if uh, if Calgary loses the series to Dallas, which hey, they might uh, – I think they're, they're – someone's going to go. And that that's going to bring in Taylor Hall to me. That's where he'll go. He'll go to Calgary. But uh, that's another conversation yeah. for another day. Uh, Arizona Ultimate. They are going to have a lot of cap space. I mean, they're going to have you know with losing with losing uh, those guys. I guess you know they'll they'll have some some opportunities for somebody to step in there. And either way, it's it is unfortunate with how it ended. But it's great to see Arizona move on in some way. They had a victory in the playoffs. Even if it was just the qualifying round, uh, I think it is a, it is a move forward for this team. Now it'll just depend on how can they draft, not in the bottom. You know, it's one thing to hit on all your or most of your top ten picks. It's another thing once you're picking in the top fifteen or the uh, the back half of the fifteen. So that yeah. that'll be. They don't have a first round pick. And oh right, they give it away. Yeah, yeah, of course. And if I'm being honest, I think this is an opportunity where. You know, they have to try to make a move where I would like to see them go out and try to snag some sort of top center in this draft. Well, move into the yeah. top 10 somehow. I would like my team to do that as well. Well, of course. Every team. But I think more than almost any they team they in the draft. Yeah. Yeah, they desperately. Maybe need outside it. of Ottawa or maybe Detroit, they need a top center. Right? Yeah. And those teams aren't in a position to win now. So you're not going to go out and do anything like that. Exactly. Uh, whereas Arizona needs, uh, needs something, which. In some ways, they got it, but unfortunately, yeah, they won their series, but they didn't get any home games out of it. And not a lot of publicity out of what happened in that that qualifying round, just because of what else is happening in the world. So, uh, but hopefully, a good step moving forward. Uh, to me, they're still a team that will be, regardless of who they go and sign, assuming that they use their money to bring in some level of talent. They're still the same team. They're still a bubble playoff team to me. Yeah. That's that's what they'll be next year. Maybe they continue to get great goaltending from Kemper and a couple players develop a little further, but ultimately they will still be a bubble team next year, regardless of what they do. Yeah, if they, I mean, we know they'll still play that defensive sort of yeah. game and they'll win those two one games and, like you said, make it a make it a push for the playoffs every year. All right, let's go to the Chicago Blackhawks. Didn't win a single game against the Vegas Golden Knights. No, they won. Oh, one. Oh, they did win one. They did win one. Oh yeah, they did win one. That's <laughs> right. I think that was the one I didn't watch. There you go. <laughs> that That's was why. why. Yeah. See, that was why. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So it went five games. Uh, the Blackhawks looked uh, looked overmatched for the most part in the, especially in the games I watched since uh, Vegas won all four of them. <laughs> uh, I mean, Patrick Kane. I think he he left a little bit to be desired in in this series. Uh, he played much better in the in the preliminary round than he did here against Vegas. But uh, overall, 
I think this is just a like, yay, we made it. Chicago had no business being here. Uh, Arizona, I'd say they did. Like they they could have made the playoffs in a normal scenario. So I think that them making it to the fir- quote unquote first round is less of a like whoa how did you get here and then it was for chicago that had just had no business being there uh kind of same as montreal but uh both montreal's holding their own against philly uh i should say carrie price is holding his own there you go (laughs) but yeah what did you think about chicago and and i guess this is their like this is a development a developmental year and they happen to make it to the first round of the playoffs yeah i think it's clear that a lot of their younger guys were just overmatched in terms of depth especially up front um, you know, it's clear that Vegas can roll, you know, their top two lines all night long and they're producing. Whereas, you know, Chicago really, if their top two lines aren't producing, they're not going to get any support from the bottom, unfortunately. Yeah. And Mark Stone looked fantastic. Yeah, really and that, that's what we were, that's what I was hoping to see from Mark Stone. Yeah. He eight, looked like the Mark Stone we've all wanted. Eight points in eight games. Uh, yeah. A very balanced and defensively very strong. Uh, yeah. It was, it was just, you know the one game that Chicago wins, you get it. You actually had a good game from Corey Crawford. <laughs> Only lets in the one goal, and the rest of them. You know, really that that's what it came down to. Ultimately, was the goaltending situation. I mean that. Yeah, and he wasn't he wasn't very good. I mean, he Robert, wasn't good against the Oilers, and they still beat the Oilers. No. <laughs> well, that's because he. Yeah, that's because he got some scoring up front. But I mean, look, Corey Crawford's a free agent this year. I don't know if Chicago's going to bring him back. If they do, it'll be like on a one year, a one, 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 you know, one couple two, million maybe, dollar. Yeah. It, deal. I, th- I think he might get the same kind of respect that maybe a Mike Smith got, where he got like two years at three million. Sure, you yeah. know, if if he wants to go somewhere and and uh, he could go somewhere where they need goaltending, I don't know how much Chicago is going to be willing to uh, to give up to keep him. I actually could see Chicago going after Robin Leonard and bringing him back. I'm sure that was discussed before they dealt they still him. Can. And they said, you know, maybe they went to him and said, hey, you know, listen, we um, we know we're not going to make the playoffs because obviously yeah. nobody knew yeah. this was going to happen. Right. And they're like, we're going to deal you so we can get an asset because we know we're not getting into the dance. So we're still interested in bringing you back. We still liked what you gave us. You know, are you interested in... You know, we'll talk in the summer, and of course, all this happens. And I still think it's possible. However, they've only got, I think, roughly, Cap Friendly has them with like roughly $7 million in cap space. Now, a lot of that changes because, you know, some of these younger guys or some of these older guys might get dealt. Well, if if Seabrook stays on LTIR, like let's maybe assume that Seabrook is actually going to be done, then that will open up six or eight million. Yeah. Might open up a couple bucks. And I mean, yeah, they could go out. They could sign a Braden Holpe. They could get a Robin Lehner, and they're probably at a reasonable price. Yeah, I'd much rather uh, spend money on Lehner than oh, I would on Holpe yeah. for sure, <laughs> hands down. At twenty nine, uh, he's probably going to command six six million. Would be my guess, at least. Yeah, I, I think six, six to seven times is six fair. or something like that. Yeah, I hope he gets well. And, well, and the the because the cap is going to stay flat. I think that that could hurt his ultimate prospect. Like he might go and have to take five and a half or five if he wants yeah. the long term. Well, I think I think there's going to be a bidding war for probably your your Leonard and Markstrom, and then everybody else is going to kind of fall underneath. Yeah, actually, you know what could happen is because the cap's going to stay flat. You know, you look at a guy who's 29, and maybe this doesn't apply so much to a 29 year old. Maybe teams are are more willing to give out a full seven years, but for Holtby. Maybe you're willing to give him seven years if he's willing to take like four a year, and that's how you, that's how these guys are going to get their money because they're going to go. Well, we can't like long cap's term, not going up, money. Yeah. but we'll give you the long term deal, and we can you know we can deal with this later on. Put you on LTIR and call it a day, <laughs> and then you're not paying the guy you know for for nothing. Or like you can, right. can kind of bury him in a way later on. So I, I think you might see that with the with that happening, but uh, yeah, I think. Chicago certainly is going to have to figure out their goaltending and they're just need to continue developing these guys. But I guess the question is going to be, you know, you've got Brandon Saad who's going to come up on a, a UFA at the end of next season. So he, to me is definitely a candidate to be dealt. I think you're more than willing to maybe hold, hold two or 3 million of that deal and, and uh, send him on his way, you know, see if you can find a, a taker who's willing to give you some picks. 
Yeah, the concern for me is they've got younger guys developing up front, but on the back end, they don't really have much. So a guy like Saad could make. Well, they do have Adam Bulkfist, which that's yeah. that's yeah. kind of your. You know, he was what third or third or fifth overall or something like that. Yeah, and maybe he develops into a nice piece, and I'm, I'm eighth overall. Yeah, I'm still thinking he has that potential, but you know, I I want to see more more younger guys that they can bring up on the back end because again, you need to complement these forwards up front, and they need to go out and find something in goal because Malcolm Subban's not a long term answer. I can tell you that right now. So Wait, he's not even a short term no. answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, they've got so many guys who are who are coming coming up. I mean, you are going to have to pay. Uh, Kajula and Kubelik and Dylan Strom, they're they're all going to take you know not not massive deals by any means, but they're all going to need money. They're all going to get poor, more than their their uh, ELC that they're on right now. So oh no doubt that is going to be interesting. So I mean that's just where Chicago is going to have to kind of maneuver this with their you know four defensemen that are all making about four four million plus. And then, of course, there are two superstars making ten and a half. It is nice to get that Corey Crawford goaltending off the books. If you can't find a really great goaltending, maybe you just try to do it by a committee and pull in a couple two to three million guys. And maybe, yeah, maybe Corey Crawford is one of those guys. Bringing a Mike Smith, willing or, to come in yeah. for cheap. Yeah, uh, but yeah, only only seven million in cap space. So that'll be interesting to see how they resign everybody. Uh, but Chicago, to me, I think they're on the up and up uh, based on the progression of some of these younger guys and I, like Kirby Doc's only going to get better Kubelik and and maybe Alexander Nylander there's a little glimmer of hope for him and Dylan Strom's looking better so I, I think things will pan out well for them uh maybe they won't probably win three cups in five years but or six seven years whatever it was but they uh they'll be back uh, you want to do Carolina or Columbus next? Let's. I want to let's save Carolina for last. Okay. All right. So the Columbus Blue Jackets they uh, participate in what the fourth longest game in the history of the league in Game One. That game was madness. The weirdest part about that game was the fact that it was. I can't remember what time did it end. It ended at like nine something. Yeah, I think it was because they had to move the Carolina game to the morning. Right. Right. And, it, and that game had started at three. And it was just like, wait, uh, we were. It was like you're watching this game, and usually these long overtime games, you're used to it being like two a.m. Right. For some reason, all the long overtime games always were West Coast games. It felt like, <laughs> uh, and and no matter what, even if the game started at seven thirty, eight o'clock, you're still into the one a.m. hour uh, on some of those long games, like that Philly Pittsburgh one where Keith Primo wins the game, like. Uh, those games, that's like my memory of long overtime games is it's definitely past midnight and you're still watching. Whereas this was like, it's only nine o'clock, <laughs> but we're going into the fifth overtime. And uh, yeah, it was certainly, it was uh, entertaining and a lot of fun. Uh, just as a side note, if the league ever decides, oh, two overtimes is enough and we'll go to a shootout, I will protest on the, on the street of hockey whatever <laughs> wherever that is i'm gonna be pissed i'll be you better you. not do anything like that because this rarely happens and it was unbelievable it's fun to watch from me from a goaltending i just keep like come on keep going keep going i want this game to go seven ot's <laughs> like Ooh, i don't know if i ever want, I want that, it to but... break the record i want to be able to see the longest game ever you know like i mean nobody was mad about when when wimbledon went and had to go to another day to play you remember that? Oh, yeah. Like 2010 or something. That was amazing. And everyone was talking about it. It's just a way to get people talking about your sport. Like, it's not a bad thing. It's not like people are, I can't believe they're allowing people to play that long. <laughs> no, and, you know, especially in today's day and age, I think players are taking better care of themselves health-wise. So I don't think there's that risk of a guy's going to yeah. injure himself because he's just playing too hard. And and, and from a broadcasting standpoint, I like, I get it. That game had to get, get moved to the next day. But... It didn't really matter, and this is the only time you're ever going to actually have to move a game. Most of the time, you're just going to be able to play, and you're going to say, hey, it's over on our alternate channel or something, or we'll watch it on NHL Network. So uh, that's all I have to say about that. But the Tampa Bay Lightning ultimately beat them in five games. It felt closer than that. All the games were very tight. Uh, but Tampa Bay ultimately taking this one and uh, kind of went the way that I was hoping it would go. 
I wanted Columbus to be gone because Tampa is fun to watch. They are. They're yeah. very fun to watch, especially and, when you don't have Pittsburgh or Edmonton. Yeah, those yeah. Two, those fun players. Exactly. In there. You want more of these guys. I, I I wanted to see them move on, and I was I was happy that they 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 got past their snake bite from, <laughs> from Columbus. Uh, speaking of Columbus, though. Uh, where do you see them going from here? Because this really is like what three of the last four years they've lost in the first round. They've only won one series in their team history outside. I guess if you if you consider the the leaf, they did beat the Leafs. So I guess that's they've won two technical series uh, in the history of their organization. Uh, this year was supposed to kind of be a a backwards year, anyways, but. They, they did okay without really any superstars up front because of really great coaching. Uh, they have phenomenal goaltending. Five million in cap space. And where do they go from here? Well, thank their lucky stars that uh, they've got both these goaltenders signed for two more seasons at really cheap numbers. I mean, really cheap. <laughs> Corpus Allo, 2.8, and Merce Lickens at $4 million, right? Corpus Allo, my God, this man. Insane. I, I Columbus probably should have been swept if it. He not, made all the saves. Free. He did. He yeah. did. He did everything you could ex, you could ever hope for out of a goaltender. I, I actually don't think wonder if they had lost that game earlier, if he wasn't better later in the series. Because remember, they played a couple of long games with the Leafs too in overtime, right? And I, I wonder if he hadn't played that insane game, if he would have been more rested. I mean, I don't know if you get any better than a 941 save percentage. So, well, but a lot of that was because of that. <laughs> oh, sure, that yeah. game definitely goals, helped. You know, yeah, mean, through 88 shots. But I mean, look, we we know Pierre Luc Dubois is a superstar up front. We know what they got. Yeah, Seth that Jones, was even his though, coming out party. Yeah, man. he was this great. playoffs. He was he minus was that cross checking on the boards against Braden Point in that last game. But um, Seth Jones. He was sort of in and out a lot of times in the series, but we know what he is. He's he's a fantastic defenseman. So, you know what? Everybody's allowed to slip up, you know, in a series and maybe not play their best. But the problem is, is when your superstars maybe slack off a little bit or maybe just don't have it, you know, for a few games, you need other guys to pick up. And so, you know, up front, especially Pierre Luc Dubois was doing everything for him. There weren't they weren't getting much else from everybody you know from anybody yeah, else. Yeah. Offensively, the they just... yeah, offensively, and that's the problem. I, I know Barry or you know John Tortorella. That's the way he likes to play. He likes to play those tight games, but you can't expect your goaltender to make forty saves no. every game. No. Although I will say though, you know, those last couple of games, it it seemed like for a majority of the time Columbus was Columbus getting all actually the shots. drove the play. Yeah they, yeah, they did. They did really well. They wore the Tampa Bay Lightning down a little bit. It's just Tampa. Tampa was able to to score. Yeah, that, I mean, you could see it when. Uh, when Braden Point scored in overtime in Game Five, just that it was relief. like, "Thank you, God, <laughs> yeah. we don't have to play these bastards anymore." I know. Like, but I will. Tampa, though, they did have one thing they didn't have last year, and they had a line that could grind with yes. Columbus yes. and Yanni Gord. You know, Barclay; those guys could yep. go out and and grind, and so that ultimately, what I think is made the difference, and with no Steven Stamkos too. And you know, it doesn't help Columbus that you know they're with, they're without Brandon Dubinsky, they're without Josh Anderson. Those those are two big losses up front. Oh, absolutely for sure. Uh, but side note, Alexander Texier, he looked really good through throughout the play. Like he looked like a guy who could maybe make a difference down the road and be a decent top nine forward for Columbus. Which you're always looking for those guys. Also, Riley Nash, he's kind of come back. Like he looked all right. Whereas he remember he was in the minors. <laughs> Oh yeah, and, and they sent him down, and and here he is up uh, playing a pretty decent role as the third line center for this team, and he looked pretty good doing it. So he got that decent deal after, uh, you know, after signing after playing for the Bruins and stuff, and, and looking good, and he was garbage, and and he's back. So that's that's always good because he's got another two point seven five million on a, <laughs> on a deal. It's just gonna kind of like we're gonna find out, you know, what's what is Columbus going to do. Because they have to re-sign Pierre Luc Dubois, like Pierre Luc Dubois isn't getting less than Nylander. He's not getting less. Yeah, he'll than, get eight, I think, is what I'd peg him in. He's, I mean, uh, he'll yeah, get Ryan Johansson money. It's going to be hard not to. Uh, I mean, you know, regular season wise, yeah, not great. Ten points in ten playoff games, though, kind of had his coming out party, and the fact that his points, the the system he plays in, doesn't exactly say. Go out there and get your points, right? But I think he's too, a really good defensive center. Like, there's a lot that goes into it. I, I feel like if Columbus 
if Columbus is smart, then I mean he's probably getting seven years at maybe even nine. No, see what I think he's probably going to end up doing, knowing the take the short that they're in. Yeah, he'll take the short, knowing they're in a flat cap, and say, okay, you know, I'll take three, four years at seven, eight million dollars, or maybe even nine because he's taking on shorter term, and he's going to try to cash in because yeah. But then I mean, then the Blue Jack, what's the advantage for them? Then they then he's a UFA at the end of the deal. Well, I think he'll he'll run it into the last years of his um, into his RFA year, so that he's may, maybe. He's on his last year. But, sure, they're going to want to um, try and get him. They're going to try, yeah, to get him. But, um, I mean, honestly, if if Alexander Wenberg had played up to where I thought he could be last year or where he should have been, you know, maybe that's a different discussion because now Columbus has this leverage to say, oh, well, we've got another guy who can play center for us. Which, so, which Wenberg did look a little better in the yeah, playoffs. Yeah, he looked better. Five points in 10 games as opposed to 22 and 57. So Right. Looked better, but, again... If he had been out there, you know, if Winberg looked like, you know, scored eight points in ten games or something like that, then Columbus could be like, okay, well, we could probably use him more, so we don't need you as badly. But they need him. They badly. need him they, badly. Even, even if he knows Winberg's it. good, you need to have two good centers. So, uh, I mean, he's going to get his money, and it'll just it'll it'll be interesting to see that deal because right now, you know, with Columbus has five point two million in cap space, they've got quite a bit of money in their defense. And they also have to be thinking, like, all right, we've got Ryan Murray and now? David Savard, who are UFAs. And then in that three years from now, you've got Seth Jones and Zach Wierenski. They're not are, keeping both of them. No. There's I no, don't think so. There's no way. So it, it'll be interesting to see how they go about trying to structure this. Now, you do have, like, Felino's a UFA in a couple of years. and But... And both their goaltenders in two years. They've got to resign there. People aren't too worried. You're not worried about three years from now. I, I get you are, but you're at the same time you're not. Like right. You're just trying to do what you can do ne- next year. But uh, Pierre Luc Dubois, probably the biggest thing on on the docket for Columbus. Uh, other guys that are RFAs, you can easily take care of those guys. But and Josh Anderson actually is an RFA too. So I wonder. Yeah. I wonder if they just let him go. But. It's possible, but I think I think if you're Columbus, though, you're hoping that the younger guys develop and the guys you have signed can get a little bit better next year, so that that way, you know, you can try right. to make a splash without having to dip in the right. free agency. Right. Uh, okay, let's go to the the Carolina Hurricanes. Maybe Justin Williams, uh, swan song here that didn't last very long. Uh, the Bruins went from looking pretty rough in the in the exhibition games to. For the most part, just rolling over the Carolina Hurricanes. They they did not have much of an answer, especially goaltending wise. What, what were your thoughts on that series? I was impressed with Boston's second line, and I said it coming into the series. I said the difference would be, you know, can Carolina's depth carry them? Because I wasn't so confident in, in Krejci's line's ability. You know, right. I thought Coyle would chip in every once in a while, which he did, and he looked good playing. Yeah, he had but, a couple goals. Yeah. yeah. But my bigger concern was Krejci's line, you know, who they pair with them and how they perform. And, boy, they look like the most consistent line throughout this series. And with good reason because that's how they were able to finish off Carolina 5 because you look past, you know, obviously losing Sveshnikov was a huge hurt for Carolina. But when you look past Ajo, they weren't getting a lot of support offensive-wise. Right. You know, a lot of depth guys weren't playing. And when you've got two lines, potentially, you know, maybe two and a half if you count Coyle, that are rolling in Boston and and they're getting good goaltending from Halak. I mean, there's there's really no chance for Carolina. Yeah, it was it was uh, pretty weird that Rask just left right. in the middle now, of a series. I'm not but. Gonna, you know what? I'm not going to hate on him for it. I know there's you know Mike Milbury's out there bashing him for doing that, but I'll never I I will never get mad at a guy you know especially in this era with COVID if he wants to say no I just want to go home I want to be with my family I don't want to deal with this shit. That's fine, whatever. I may not agree with you. I may have said, you know, hey, stick it out, but that's your choice. Cool, whatever. And it's not... It just seemed weird because it came after him saying, like, oh, I don't like the vibe here. There's it no is weird. fans. It's annoying. And then, yeah. like, Rod Brindamore talks crap back to him and was <laughs> like, well, I find that guys say that after they lose. And, oh, you yeah. know, they, they went back and forth. And then he just said, no, I'm going home. I want to be know, with my and, family. And, I, like, I, I want... I mean, it, in fairness, it sounded... The way that it was all worded, it really sounded like he... Not to put like emotions based on his words, but it sounded like a little bit of depression uh, was kind of setting in, which I started wondering, like, okay, we're only a couple weeks into this. What happens when we're four weeks into this? 
like towards the end of the second round and these guys haven't seen their kids and their wives and their or their girlfriends or their friend like outside of their team for four weeks that's a long time yeah. uh well, and as it gets a little further i know that once you get to the the conference finals some family can come in and, right. and all that but i i do think that this is going to be as much of a mental game as it is uh as it is just going out and playing the game oh, like, no you got to keep yourself sharp and you know i was wondering okay back to the leaf series <laughs> mitch marner a couple times he looked like trash and i always you know you always hear oh Marner and some of these guys, they all play Fortnite together. And it has been proven many times that video games can really screw up some hand eye coordination and like it can throw off your timing. And I was like, I just wonder. I wonder if these guys are playing way more than they usually do and then they're going from playing these games, going to going to the actual the hockey game right. and then they're just their timing's off a little bit because of because of these games. I don't know. But what Maybe. else are you supposed to do in there? <laughs> yeah, I mean, so let me ask you this question, though, too. Would we be making such a big deal of Tuka Rask if it was a guy like, you know, Chris Wagner from Boston that was like, no, I'm going home. Like, no. like okay, whatever. See no, ya. no, Bye. because the Bruins don't rely on Chris Wagner the exactly. way that they do with Tuka Rask, which, which, yes, from a, like, just an individual, personal, have nothing to do with the game. Yeah, it's fine, of course, but it does it does seem strange, like, eh, screw it, I'm out. It is strange. I Fortunately, will give you they have Halak. And maybe that factored into his decision. He's like, you guys will be fine. Yeah, maybe. He's yeah. like almost as good as me. So Does okay. he get his name on the cup? I'd say lick well, my balls. You definitely <laughs> do not get your name on the cup. I mean, they'll put his name on the cup if they win. I mean, technically, you know, I don't know what the rules are. I know, like, specifically to get on the cup, you have to have played one game in the Stanley Cup Finals or the team or, competition. Or a certain amount of playoff. It's a certain right. amount of playoff games or the a team certain amount of regular season games. I think you can also get Okay, in there, maybe. Too. But, um, yeah, so maybe that plays into it. But, I mean, he'd get his name I on the I would petition anyways. not to have him be on the cup. <laughs> we know you would. Uh, back to Carolina, though. So, <laughs> a more important topic here. I, I mean, long term or even short-term for that matter. I don't know if I'm necessarily worried for this team, but my biggest question is in goal because I, I looked at the numbers. James Reimer, Peter Morazic, they all looked fine. The numbers were good. They weren't great at some points. There was, I mean, obviously that Bergeron goal wraparound to end the series was kind of a softie. I'm sure Morazic would want back, but at the same time, when the numbers look fine, I'm already hearing rumors of like, oh man, we're going to go out and we're going to poach a you know Robin Leonard, or we're going to go after a big name goaltender. Go like, I mean, yeah, not going to hurt you, right? I mean, but at the same time, I'm like, why? I, I would it have made see, that big of a difference yeah, in that series? Would it have? You know, is that really the bigger concern? And to me, bigger concern is up front. I think, uh, you know, what happens when a guy like you know Shvesnikov or Aho or Teravainen goes down? You know. Are these guys going to pick up the slack? And you know, didn't really look like they were doing much of it. Right, right. Yeah, it was it was basically Aho, Shvetsnikov, and the rest of them. <laughs> right. Even all through the playoffs, really not not doing a whole lot. Uh, yeah, it's you don't. It wasn't goaltending. Definitely was not the problem. Uh, I really truly believe that they were just totally overmatched. Yeah, it, the experience showed. Yeah, it and the showed. Bruins, the Bruins just know how to win in the playoffs. Carolina, it just looked like the Bruins were just toying with them sometimes. Like they just knew what to do. They really did. And uh, and outside of ah- Aho looked fantastic. Uh, he he always had, but he, even so, he didn't take over like he like he did in the first round. Uh, but I should say the prelim- preliminary round. Uh, but overall, it's a, they they just need to continue developing uh, and and acquiring depth. Like beyond those guys, you're right; they don't have a whole lot. You know, they tried the the Ryan Dzingle, and uh, now they have Vince Trocheck, and Trocheck didn't really uh, he wasn't anything special at all in that series. I don't know if like after he after he hurt himself, hurt his knee a couple years ago. And came back. I'm wondering if the reason that the Panthers were so willing to ditch him is because they knew they could see something had changed in him, and that's that's why they dealt him. But you know, it doesn't hurt. Like Ryan Dezingle, no points in the playoffs. I mean, that's a uh, that's a problem. You know, it's you brought you him in to be for. your third your third line center, and he's not putting up any points. Vince Trocheck, two assists. He had one goal in 15 games uh, for the for the uh, Hurricanes, and really only had. This entire year, in seventy games, he had eleven goals. 
So somewhere, I mean, in the last two years, he's in 70, 70 uh, 125 games, he's got 20 goals after a 31 goal season. So something's going on with Vince Trocek. He's got to find his, uh, figure out what's going on there. Uh, my guess is that it has something to do with his knee, but ultimately that's a big problem. <laughs> you need him to be scoring because, uh, you don't have really much of a second line, and that's been the issue for them. Defensively, they're great. They just need to take one of those defensive players and make a move, in my my opinion. I mean, you're going to lose Vatnin. You're going to lose Edmondson. You're going to lose Van Riemsdyk. So you got to kind of figure out where you go from here. Or at least you're going to lose all of them but one. Yeah, I could you see might be Van able Riemsdyk. to keep one of them. Staying on a on the cheap for maybe a couple million dollars, but you know, like you said, he might got, go to Philly or something. Yeah, I mean, yeah, go play with his bro, right? Well, I mean, they've got Hayden Flurry, they've got Jake Bean, they've got these young guys. But they're gonna have, yeah, they're gonna have to pay Hayden Flurry, who looked yeah. actually pretty good in that first round. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, the question is, at this point, are you interested in moving a Brady Shea or maybe a Jake Bean at this point? I, I mean, you you have to move somebody. I really think you have to. You need to take the strength that you have on your back end and move it forward. And frankly, it's funny because we've been talking about this for like four years, but they've never really done it. <laughs> they haven't really taken any of those defensive prospects, move them forward, or move them for a forward. And the Toronto Maple Leafs are the team to do that with. There's some pretty darn good players in the forward position there that. Could thrive in a top six position in Carolina. Maybe like a Kasperi Kapanen. Or... Either like either a Kapanen or Andreas Janssen. Yeah. I mean, depending on who you're willing to move, you know, there's Nylander. Like, he seems to, I guess, at least be the guy that's like, well, he's the one that if you were going to trade any of those, the four, you know, he'd be the guy that you might move. Okay, well, say, say Carolina's interested in Nylander. What would it take? To go back to Toronto, Slavin. To make you, just that's it. Yeah. Well, I don't think they're getting rid of him. No, I mean, no. Slavin or ha- Hamilton aren't coming, aren't leaving. Maybe not, but I mean, Hamilton only has, is a UFA after next year. Sure. So you have to like he's my guess, just based on based on everything we know about Dougie Hamilton and what he's done in the league thus far. Do you really think he's going to stay in Carolina? He's going to chase the money, and he's or he's going to chase like going and being on a winning team. Yeah, I mean, I could see him moving on, but I don't think initially, um, you know, Carolina is going to want to move him. I think maybe they'll they'll try to wait early on in the season and see what some of the younger guys are doing. And if they're like, oh man, you know, we could we could live without him, then let's let's move on. Let's let's bring in a winger. Let's go see if we can't fetch that Nylander for Hamilton and throw in some picks. A Nylander for a, for a Hamilton if Hamilton's willing to sign a long term deal right. at a decent number. Yeah, and that's the other question too. You know, if a team yeah. can't. Sign him, you know. Are they willing to give a big piece? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're not going to trade Slavin unless you know you've got someone else locked up. You know, that's the the other thing. And Slavin is just so good. So. <laughs> yeah. And he signed a, no- a nothing deal, another five three for another five years. So that's that's basically a uh, that's like a Nashville Predators deal. It really is a Yossi. Right they had yeah. him for four mil for so long. <laughs> Silly. <laughs> Uh, anything else with the Carolina Hurricanes that you uh, you want to hit on? You you were you had tweeted about Justin Williams a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I honestly I think the the bigger question is is he coming back? Is he going? And in my opinion is no. I think he's done. He's not coming back because I think especially last year you waited this long because you weren't willing to give up the body for this kind of you know push for the playoffs. And are you willing to do it again next year, knowing? You know, again, yeah, the short the season of whatever the, it's going yeah, to look like, and yeah. all this stuff going on right now in the world, I, I just don't see it. I don't, I don't think the drives there anymore to really compete. Yeah, I mean, he for, looked okay. He, you know, he had a goal in the seven games that he played in. in he playoffs. can still play in the league. There's no doubt about play. it in my mind. But does he want to do it? I don't. I don't really think so. Yeah, and and I don't know if you're Carolina, if you're willing to go. Sure, yeah, come back in like in January next year. Yeah. Well, I guess. <laughs> January next year is going to be the equivalent of like right. March. Uh, I I think if if I'm Carolina, I tell him like, hey, we either need you here for the whole year, or you know, and and like we're happy to let you sit out every other game, right? Not practice. Like, to as me, much. that that's what like if you're if you're a veteran, a real like an old guy in baseball, they'll sit you out. Like you only play two thirds of the games, right? If you know. It's funny that hockey doesn't really have that culture of like, yeah, we're just benching him just because we want him to rest. 
Like we're a good team. We don't need them for every game. And we know that this particular game is kind of a, like we, we can get some young guy in there instead yeah, of bringing him Morgan and, geeky up and just rotate with him. You know? Yeah. It seems like on. that, that could be an option. Unfortunately, it's not like hockey is like, you're healthy. You're going in unless it's oh, last game of the season. And we have, we're in first place or we're not going to move anywhere. Okay. We'll rest a few guys, but you're not really doing that until the very end of a year. Uh, but if you just, just like a goalie, like if you just ro- rotated guys in on a more regular basis, you might see greater success from an older player. Be interesting to uh, to see how that could play out. All right, well, I think that's it. That's all the teams that have lost. We'll uh, the rest of the series that end, which they're all going to end in a couple some, days at some point. Yeah. Uh, our next show will uh, will break down the four teams that lose. I think you said so far. You are two and two. No, you are two and two. Oh, I'm two and two. I'm three and one, sir. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Although I did pick the the correct amount of games for Carolina Boston, just picked the wrong. Just team. the wrong. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So I'm two and two. He's three and one. Vancouver and uh, and St. Louis. That's my. I got I got to snag Vancouver to uh, to catch back up to you. That's yeah. I think that you got Dallas too, where I got Calgary. Okay, so. there you go. Well, and Dallas is. Uh, We'll find out tonight. <laughs> we'll find out tonight who uh, who takes the first round because some of these are about to be over. I th- I believe we both said the Islanders though. We both have the Islanders and Philly, yeah, which so. which that was a that was a pretty good call. Um, I am rooting for Game Seven for the Flyers and the Canadians. That to me has actually been the most fun series. I have loved watching that series. Yeah, Backstrom's back tonight too, so that'll okay. make an even bigger difference. Yeah, for the capital. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, that's our show. You can find us on Twitter at OT Hockey Talk. Let us know what you thought. And, uh, yeah, we'll just continue watching playoff hockey. So glad that there's been no outbreaks inside of the bubble. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon.